gypsum is a versatile mineral that can be used for manufacturing wallboard, cement, and plaster, to name a few. But get this, it can also be used as a fertilizer. Dr. Warren Dick of Ohio State University joined me to discuss his research on gypsum and provide some insight into its impact on agriculture. Gypsum is a, a mineral. It's a naturally formed mineral, naturally found in the environment. It's calcium sulfate. Uh, so it incorporates or has two essential elements, calcium and sulfur. And uh, one of the things to know about gypsum is it's moderately soluble. And it's not completely soluble, it's, but it is much more soluble than lime, which is another calcium source. Uh, we say it's about 200 times more soluble than lime. And that's very important because it helps that calcium move down into the profile where it can do some very beneficial things for our soil. And what I think is pretty cool, your research looks at how gypsum can be applied to agriculture. So why is that something that could be beneficial to ag? Sure, well, I already mentioned that gypsum is, contains two essential elements. So I'm gonna talk first of all about sulfur. When I started work on gypsum and actually on sulfur in general, people were saying, Warren, why are you doing this research? There's no such thing as sulfur deficiencies in this country. But as we went through the Clean Air Act and we start scrubbing the sulfur out of our flue gases when we were burning our, our fossil fuels, uh, all that free sulfur we, we were getting in our rainfall uh, went away. And so we were removing more sulfur every year from our crop harvest. We were leaching more sulfur. We weren't getting as much in the rainfall anymore. So now many states are starting to report deficiencies of sulfur in their crops. And one of the really good sources of sulfur is gypsum. Uh, and of course, then the other side of this material is the calcium. And calcium is very beneficial as far as rooting of crops, uh, soil physical properties, helps the infiltration of water and air, aggregates the soil so that infiltration can become more efficient. And so those are some of the benefits that can be captured by applying gypsum to ag soils. And your research also talks about gypsum, using gypsum generated from smokestacks of coal plants and putting that toward agriculture. So how do you turn it from what comes from the smokestack to what you're going to end up putting toward your field? Yeah, that's a very good question. When you burn a fossil fuel that has sulfur and you scrub that sulfur out, for example, if you burn coal, a lot of the coal ash removes all those heavy metals and things you don't want. The gases continue to go up through a series of, uh, eventually through the smokestack, but as it's going to that process, through that process, uh, it's bubbled through a calcium lime slurry. And that sulfur reacts with the calcium to make this gypsum, calcium sulfate. So it's quite pure material. It's got very uniform size and uh, it's a very good beneficial material for ag materials. It's also used, of course, to make wallboard in construction, but uh, ag has certainly become another important market for this material. The problem is nowadays, however, though, as there's more pressure to remove coal as a source of fuel in our country, uh, farmers are wanting gypsum, it's, but it's becoming a little bit harder to find. Uh, so maybe the mine source will become more important as we continue down this road. But the, the, the material from these uh, power plants has uh, been a very good source of gypsum over the years, past few years. And when you're talking about using gypsum in ag, I, I'm sure a lot of folks wonder, okay, how would that impact the water quality when it's going down into the soil? Could you speak on that a little bit? Yes, the way it does is the calcium, well, two ways. One is the calcium helps aggregate the soil, allows much better water infiltration into the soil, so you don't get as much runoff. A lot of the phosphorus that ends up in our lakes piggybacks on sediment that's eroded. So if you can get more water going into the soil instead of running off the soil, you decrease the amount of erosion and sediment movement. But the other thing is, especially where we're moving more into no tillage, and all the fertilizers are applied on the surface, or even with the four R's, maybe under the surface, but never the soil is never tilled, you do get a buildup of available phosphorus at the surface. And that can be a good thing for, in some cases, it helps feed the plant. But every time it rains, some of that phosphorus becomes dissolved, gets into the 
tile drainage or the surface drains into our rivers and lakes, and it's that available soluble phosphorus which really fuels eutrophication or that uh, algae formation in our lakes. And so what gypsum does is the calcium reacts with the phosphorus, makes calcium phosphate, keeps that phosphorus, that soluble phosphorus on the field where you want it. It's still available for plants. The soil test values really don't change a whole lot. So the plants can still take it up, but you're really improving the water quality coming off the fields because you're not having the soluble phosphorus no longer in that water that's coming off the field. So that's how that gypsum really helps provide a benefit. And I know there's uh, government programs, some government programs where they are actually cost sharing with farmers to apply gypsum to their soils, especially where there's very heavy phosphorus movement to help improve the water quality coming off those fields. Oh, very interesting. So have you found any drawbacks to using gypsum in agriculture? There are drawbacks, just like anything else. You have to use it uh, effectively and, and properly, especially on sandy soils. If you apply too much gypsum, that calcium will knock off all your magnesium and, and other uh, required cations. And so you can get a very imbalanced cation and, and uh, anion nutrient uh, profile in your soil, and that can cause problems. So you really have to make sure you understand where it's appropriate to use, what is the appropriate rate, so that you don't end up with these imbalances and causing these problems that can occur when you use gypsum as a soil amendment. Despite the fact that gypsum has been around for over the last two centuries, we're still studying its benefits. Good information from Warren.